Tash, how are you doing with this whole COVID situation? How is your family? How are you? Obviously, this is something that was completely unpredictable. You so know, which mm -hmm. I'm I'm OK. I'm very, very lucky to be working from home right now. Um, I'm not a frontline worker, as you know. Today, I was fortunate enough to get dressed, <laughs> take a mm -hmm. shower, get dressed, comb my hair. Oh, so. God. Being in the PJs is a death sentence all day. So you <laughs> got it. Right. You, you can't do it. That's mm -hmm. right. No, no, no. I have daytime PJs. I get up. I actually do clean up. I just put day daytime PJs on. Different sets. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Uh, but I never in a million years thought that we would be in this position talking about what we are about to talk about today. Uh, everybody is affected by the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a worldwide thing. I, I saw that you posted something on Facebook yesterday and I loved it. Um, just how everybody's... Um, experiencing this in different ways, obviously. So that's right. That's you right. Know. I have I have friends that are scared to death to go to work every day. Right. Uh, they're scared to death to bring it home. You know, people in their household have compromised immune systems. They are literally living in their garage because they don't want to infect their family mm -hmm. and heading out. And that's a completely different life than I have. Yeah. Yeah. You have people that have completely lost their jobs. They, they lost everything. And then you have people that are a bit more fortunate. I mean, they could be doing some introspection, being home or whatever the case is. But either way, this has affected everybody. And today specifically, we're going to be talking about how it has affected our couples. That's right. Um, many of our couples have had to postpone. Some even cancel their events. We're going to go into all those details and talk about how they're feeling, what they're going through, which we can only imagine is uh, not exactly the most pleasant time for for them right now. Um but I do have hope, as I know that everybody does, that the situation is going to subside. And I think that, uh, like anything else, it's, it's when you go through something that's really tough, um, you learn a lot from it. And you take you take something from it. So, um, you know, I want to talk about how – what people have been doing at home. You know, what, what how – aside of working, you know, what, what type – what are they doing to cope and, and to get through these difficult times? That's right. And how to keep that balance between planning the most happy day of your entire life and having to deal with these circumstances. Yeah. How is that affecting you? How are you keep trucking on? Um, you know, how have you coordinated everything? So we will go through moment by moment and, you know, hopefully put some information out there that our couples will find useful. Welcome to our podcast. So you're engaged. Now what? Today, we are going to be talking about the effect of COVID-19 on your wedding plans. We have wedding coordinator Amanda Hughes from Smiling Through Chaos, and one of our clients who has also had to postpone their wedding. Before we get to our guests, we wanted to talk about how Live Picture Studios is handling COVID-19. So um, obviously, when this pandemic you know, first escalated, we were in the same position as so many other businesses. Uh, we didn't have any idea what to do. Who would have thought that a disease would would occur and um, literally businesses are closing, communities are closing. Um, it, the virus spread quickly through our country and, and through other communities. I don't think anyone or any business had a plan to deal with something of this magnitude. That's right. And that's something that came up with us right away that we had to deal with. We have a clause in our contract that is written for something like this. It's called an acts of God clause. So that is written with the intention of, you know, what happens if there is the storm of the century and guests are not able to get to the wedding, crew cannot get to the wedding, the wedding is suddenly called off. Yeah. Well, this clause is there to be able to cover our clients so that if the wedding were to be canceled, then they would be subject to getting their money back, right? And, and it's, it's funny because when we put this together, um, obviously, you know, with the intention that we would be moving or postponing the wedding to one or maybe two weekends. That's exactly right. You know, what happens if there's a storm? What happens if there is uh, something going on in the country and we're not able to have big events? Who would have in a million years, dreamt that we would be in the position that we are, not having an end date. It is so unforeseeable. Everything is changing 
day by day, town by town, country by country. So we're in this very nebulous place where nobody really knows what we can count on. Um, so that's been a challenge. So we had to get organized really quick. Uh, we had to, of course, pay attention to the news, think of how we can not only help our couples, but be stay organized as a couple with our crews, everybody that's working with the company. And I just want to say, um, it, you know, the production team is amazing. Um, oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. Yes. It's it's just, you know, jumping on these emails um, like no other. And, you know, we, the week, uh, I think, following the, the stay-at-home uh, order, our production team put together an email and, you know and what? sent it. I, w- I will say it was before mm-hmm. the stay-at-home order. Our producer, okay. Natalia, she saw this oh, happening. Oh, my God. In hats off. February. Only with Natalia hat. was amazing. She saw it. She saw it coming. She said, you realize we're getting this. It's very serious. Every couple yeah. is and, going Yeah. And, you know, let me ask you, T- Tashi, like, when this whole thing happened, because I'm, I'm a little bit guilty of it myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if the word is guilty, but I who would have – I mean, again, nobody has foresight like this. But um, I didn't – I don't know that I necessarily – took it as seriously in the beginning. I was like, you know, it's a virus. And I mean, I, you know, we heard about Zika that we heard about, uh, I don't know, whatever else is out there, um, swine flu. And mm-hmm. um, I don't know. It, I, I didn't, I never imagined that it would have this much of an impact, but yes, going back to what you were saying, Natalia did. She and Natalia, did. <laughs> she literally, it's like she had, she was like a psychic about this. And she's like, we, ha- you're right. She did do this before. It was She did, she right did this away. earlier. It and- was immediately. And she said, guys, this is not going to be good. Um, let's get it. Let's get it together. We have to have a way where we can all communicate together and have it streamlined and stay extremely organized. And so, hats off to you, Natalia. You were yeah. We love it, you, girl. Without um, this, <laughs> without no, this I mean, particular spreadsheet that she put together, we would have been recovering and having to go back and and really straighten out data. But it was seamless. It was super super easy. So we're grateful uh, for that. I was just going to say, just to, uh, just to give a little bit of insight into like the magnitude of all of this at this point, you know, especially within our company, uh, the emails were sent out to m- upcoming March and April clients. And now, you know, these emails have been ex- extended into all of our summer clients. That's right. Um, and going into our busiest part of the year where certain months we have 60 plus weddings a month. Yeah. So this is this is the the craziest time for this to happen, but luckily it it has stayed organized. Yes. Do you remember when we first heard this news? You and I had the had a conversation about well, what's so bad about this virus? It seems flu like. So you have a cough. They're saying there's nothing really bad about it. it Verbatim. Like, <laughs> yes. It, it seems that the the serious death rate is is so much smaller than influenza and. Why is everybody freaking out over this? We were very confused over this. And of yes. course, that was at that stage of our education and what's going on. And yeah, that has evolved since. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, thankfully, we have successfully scheduled, gosh, I think it's almost 90 weddings that we've successfully rescheduled yeah. at this point. We, yeah. um, we have, f- from this point forward asked our couples to speak with their venue, come up with a few dates that would work for the venue if they did need to postpone. And they came back to us with a few different dates, which we were able to go on our calendar and say, this date works, this date does not, and so on. And then that couple would then take that information with our date availability and go back to all of their other vendors and make sure that it's aligning then once they come back to us and confirm this is the date that's working for everyone, very simple process with us. We have sent out a contract amendment that would just state that the original contract is staying intact. In, you know, mm-hmm. staying intact, mm-hmm. and we're ju- and we're just changing the date. No fee yeah. whatsoever. If your w- original date was on a Thursday, and all of a sudden you're on a Saturday, we didn't feel like that was fair to ever penalize a couple. So, yeah. And, you know, when things like this you happen, you really don't know what to expect. But, I I mean, I have to say, all, all of my clients that I've dealt with, um, it's just been it, – like you said, Natasha, it's been a seamless process, mm-hmm. um, thankfully. And, uh, 
they're stressed out, but you know, they're positive. They're positive and and we're able to get I'm so I'm so grateful that for majority of them we were able to to give them the date that they wanted. That's right. Because there's a lot of moving parts on their end, a lot. And I think what? We didn't have many cancellations, maybe 12. We did have a few. And, you know, we really tried to work something out. And some clients ended up having to cancel their weddings entirely because they lost their jobs and didn't know how they would be able to fund the rest of their wedding. Yes. Other couples decided, uh, you know, every single one of our vendors is, is available on this particular date except for you. What are we supposed to do? So in that case, we gave them a refund. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, one thing in our defense is this was not something that our company was financially prepared to do either. I mean, who is? So we have asked our couples that we repay their deposit in installments to mm-hmm. help us keep afloat throughout this. Yeah. So, yeah. and, and everybody's been really good Everyone's about been that. really, yeah, everyone's been really cool about it and, and understanding. I mean, it's just one of these situations where, I th- you have to be. That's right. You know, you have to be. So what I will say for our couples out there is if you do need to postpone, if you're in that, if your wedding is, let's say, July or August right now, and you are on the fence about postponing, if you are looking into future dates, just go into 2021. Move right into next summer. What yes. a lot of couples have done is they've taken a July 21st wedding and they've moved it to July 21st of 2021 or ju- whatever yeah. that Saturday or Friday is corresponding to the next year. Give yourself the peace of mind so you're not sitting on pins and needles like waiting. Will people be able to travel? Yes or no. Will large gatherings be able to happen? Push it just in advance uh, yeah, it, is what it, I would it say. Definitely, it, it definitely takes off a lot of that, um, you know, unwanted pressure. And and I, I have to say there, there have been situations where I've sent multiple amendments to one client because they were – they just keep having to push back. So, That's right. March you know, so. turned into May, which turned yeah. into June. And now they're – I mean, they're hopeful, you know, but I, I do I do think that at this point, um, it, it for that, for their sake, I think that it's probably the best, the best way to go. Well, anyway, let's get right to our guest. Uh, <laughs> Our first guest is wedding planner Amanda Hudes from Smiling Through Chaos. Hi, Amanda. Amanda. Hi. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for coming on. Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amanda, um, how's life right now? Tell me about, like, your day. What happens when you get up in the morning at this point? Um, I have to get kids ready for school. Um, Mm -hmm. one is middle schooler, so he has to do online and then the other is a toddler. So we have more of a flexible schedule. Uh, I had a babysitter for the first two weeks, but then she got a cold. So done, (laughs) done. So no more. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of, he helped my older son helps out with babysitting in between classes or if I have a meeting or something like that. Otherwise I work a lot at night. And then I work during nap time and any other time I can. It's definitely a lot, right? Yeah. You're you're wearing a lot of hats right now. I am being tested in many ways and home most of the time. Uh, But like I said, I try to go out. I go for little runs. And this actually earlier today, my son said, oh, what are you doing when you're doing yoga? I'm like, whatever I want. Basically being like, it's my time. It's my own time. You so you've created that. that space for your own mental health. Yeah, exactly. Throughout this crisis. Mm-hmm. Now, now, what's going on with your business? How is this affecting you and, and with your clients? So, I mean, as to be expected, it's been really crazy. It's been a lot. I, like you, also thought this was being hyped up completely in the beginning. Like, why is everyone going to get up toilet paper? What is this? And we don't have to go. I, I get things in advance. I thought it was maybe going to be a two week thing. Um, so everything, yeah, from March and April, why not just make it for the summer? It should be fine for June or then they kept progressing and getting more information. And so everyone right now who has rescheduled during this time is in the fall. If people were going to reschedule right now, I would absolutely say what you've been saying next year. Unfortunately, none of my clients want to move to next year. So everyone right now is, is in the fall who's rescheduled through June. And I've had why, a- why do you think that they don't want to move into next year? Is it because they are just 
antsy and want to get it on or well, the, why? Well, they got in different ways. So they want to have kids, some. <laughs> so they want to get things going. They want to get things going. They don't want to wait any longer. Also, some people, when we rescheduled those, it was supposed to be fine by fall. Now we just don't know. Mm-hmm. And that's been part of the discussions also. And part of, I mean, I'm a solution oriented person. I'm like, I have to have answers. But when people are saying, what date is this going to be over? I, unfortunately, like every other event, player, cannot know. We just don't know. And it's so hard for me to say that, that I don't have an answer or a solution for someone. Um, but we can't. I, so I have a wedding right now in July with very anxious family about that date. Is it going to be okay? We don't know. I'm hopeful, just like you, Jeannie, like I'm super hopeful and every day the numbers are getting better. So we're keeping it, but all we can do is wait until the next guideline, which is a month from now or now three weeks from now, Mm -hmm. and then make a decision and then make decisions. If you do have the wedding, what small changes can you make to make, to help people feel comfortable? And I have to say, I, I am curious, um, the effect on the wedding industry, because in the sense that when the country starts to open up, mm-hmm. it's not going to be like your turn, you know, a switch is turned on. Right. It's going to be um, priority based. Mm-hmm. And where, where, where do we fall in that? Right. You know, movie theaters, entertainment services, all of that. I, I really, you know, doctor's offices first, supermarkets yeah. first, you know, and, and little by little. Maybe yeah. like a month here, a month there. So I don't know, you know, you can't, that that occurred to me too. And I said, well, that's going to delay it. It's, you know, right. and I don't say that to my clients, but I think everybody knows that. You but know, I that's- do talk, I mean, I'm very open with my clients. Yeah. So we, I had this conversation with one yesterday where, okay, so let's say they do open towards the end of the summer because I haven't rescheduled those yet. Yeah. Um. Because like I said, Either they get the fall where there's hardly any dates left or they go to next year, which they don't want, mine don't want to do right now. So what do you do if also they have a minimum with of 200 people and now, you know, half the people are not going to fly in. What do you do? So most venues are being very flexible with their numbers, but a few are closed right now and not even discussing it. And that is something that has been very challenging in this industry for, I talked to one of my clients the other day, it's, I said, could you even imagine if you didn't have a planner right now? She's like, no, because none of us, myself included, have ever navigated this, but at least I know the industry enough and I know my job well enough to, to know where to go and what to do because I couldn't imagine getting married right now without a planner. So do you have any clients that have not been able to postpone because they can't get a hold of the venue or the venue is just not complying? We had one venue that was not answering anything. Suddenly, we were emailing and two days later, they were closed and security wrote me back. And I wrote back, you're writing me back. Where's my contact? They were all furloughed. Okay. So a week later, I tried contact again. Then I called you automatically get sent to security again. There is no contact. So finally, my client and I were just Mm -hmm. like being as creative as I could. She went on Facebook and saw somebody else who couldn't get in touch. They got in touch with someone through LinkedIn. And it was like, finally, I got in touch with the VP. And then they got in touch with someone else. And we rescheduled their wedding. But I said to them, this is so unprofessional. No one has gone through this before. But someone has to be available. Sure. You know? And you can't just ignore it. It doesn't make it go away. Right. Right. We have to be as there for our clients as we can right now. The stress they're going, they're under, it's, we're under stress. They're under even more. They, and a conversation that I've had with everyone is, this is supposed to be the best time of your life. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be exciting. And I want you to stay excited. So whatever I can take on, so I'm basically like double plan doing the work twice or three times for everyone. Um, 
and everything has gotten moved. Yeah. But I'm like, I want to try to take their stress away. What are you advising them? Are you saying, you know, move far in advance? You said that a lot of them want to do soon-ish. So what advice are you giving them right now? So right now, at this moment, I would move to next year. Mm -hmm. If, If you are going to reschedule, if you want to be hopeful for this year, keep it for now, you know, until, unless we are told to move it. But if well, let's, yeah, let's be real. Okay. Yeah. China is just now starting to get back to normal. Right. You can go to a restaurant, you can go and get your hair cut. Uh, but there are still very strict social distance guidelines. Yeah. Yes. I'm not saying that our country is ever going to be run by China. They have to check in and out wherever they go with a certain app. It tracks them. It tracks everybody they've been in contact with. I don't believe that our government will ever get there or be allowed to get there. However, this is, you know, there are a couple months in advance of us for this this curve. Mm-hmm. And they are still in a position where large gatherings are not happening. Right. So, I'm going to be really real and say, I don't think, I think our industry is going to be one of the last to get it back to normal. I don't think so. I don't know if it will be back to normal for a long time because of the fear. That's the biggest thing that I'm seeing and hearing is it's the fear. People don't want to go back to work because they're afraid. Even months from now, I heard someone last week say, if my job, she's an attorney, if my job tells me to go back into the city to go to work in June, I'm not going. So it's the fear. Even if even if everything was back to normal, will people want to, right? So smaller gatherings, and that's where I say most venues are being flexible with the numbers at least, but will people have to wear masks? Possibly. Will people want to wear masks? Most likely if they're going to a social gathering where they don't know people. I found that when people know each other, they feel more comfortable, right? And they don't feel like they have to do as much. But we're doing things such as, um, you know, if you're going to have the wedding during the summer, then what can you do to alleviate some of that fear, some of that stress? Can you have more past hors d'oeuvres instead of buffet? Can you do things like that where it makes, even if it doesn't, it might not make the difference for everyone, but for some people, because of that fear, it might make them feel more comfortable. That's a good point. Yeah. Something I had not considered. So keeping it small, yeah. of course, going to make people feel even more comfortable, but for whatever you can do, these small changes. And and I'm also coming up with new offerings for next year and for this year of smaller gatherings as well, because of that, even if people want to say, have a 50 person wedding and don't want to have that 200 person anymore, what are you going to do? What does that look like in your mind? What kind of, what's your vision for that? But I do see, I mean, like Indian weddings are huge weddings. They're not gonna suddenly say, oh, you know what? I'm fine with 10 people. Sure. One of our our clients, it was yeah. previously, a, it was a two day event. It's now down to one day yes. and they have dramatically cut their guest list. I think he said it's around one to 150 now, previously four to 500 people. Right. So that's a big change. But even what is the date they're looking at? They're looking at the end of August. So you imagine 100 to 150 people. Will we get there? Right. Will I we get there at the end of August? Like 50 I was talking to someone about this yesterday. Like, what will they start with for our industry? They're not going to just say, oh, tomorrow you can have 200 person wedding. I don't believe they're going to do that. I think they'll start with like, okay, let's start with 30 or 50. Then a few months later, let's go to 100. Let's go to 150. I agree. So, yeah. It's going to be a piece, piece, very, you know, step by step sort of a, a process right. to get and there I, because I, of the fear. Exactly. And I've only had one couple who will – probably if it doesn't happen this summer, we'll just cancel because they don't want a 50 person wedding. They wanted a bigger one and they don't want to reschedule. They want to start their lives. So it's pretty good. Yeah. Possibly one uh, with everyone else rescheduling, but then, you know, you hope for the, for the fall that it's going to be good because then (laughs) (laughs) how many of those will be scheduled again right 
So, but I'm trying to keep everyone really positive and excited because it will happen. This is going to end. It's not going to last forever. Yeah. Even though it feels like it right now, because every time they extend it by a month, I'm like, oh, <laughs> right? Yeah. Another month. But it's not going to be month, 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 month. It's going to be a, a, probably a couple more. That's right. But, and, yeah. you know, the cool thing about this industry, though, is it is love-based, yes. right? It's bringing yeah. people together. People are still actively planning their weddings. There are newly awesome. engaged couples, and now they have time. They're home. They are working from home. They're together. And right. they have all of this abundance of time to actually sit down and do the research and, and create meetings. So on the flip side, we've actually been quite busy Yes. Because people are actively planning weddings. So I don't know if you're having that same experience. I'm having people, a few people for this fall, and I'm advising them to to think forward. Sure. <laughs> and then people for next year. Yeah. Into and the year after, after a little bit. Um, I'm if, if you are not in a rush and you know next year is going to be really busy also because this year is getting moved to next year, then why not wait two years and plan it slowly and not be rushing with everyone else and get your date you want and get your venue you want. So uh, some venues, like I said, are closed right now. So we can't talk to them about options, but in a few months we can, and we can talk to those that are. Some have not closed at all, which is really surprising. Everybody's in a different boat. Some people had, I'm sure, the savings to be able to get through what they think is two months, three months, could be six months. Right. Other more, you know, smaller venues are destroyed. You take right. you take a couple months or three months of their business away, and yeah. they're they're destroyed. At the busiest time. And at this it's completely separate subject, but but the SBA loans coming in from the government sound great if you if you get one. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you know, it they're not everybody has gotten them and the money has run out and, um, but again, separate subject. And we have had, it's interesting that you mentioned that some couples are trying, are very eager to get married right away, at least to, because they're wanting to start their families. We've had a couple of couples that have pushed the wedding off, the reception, but they actually just want to do a very simple ceremony, Mm -hmm. family only, keep it intimate. And we're in a pickle because we would love to give our crew the work right now right. to be able to go. It seems very honest and simple. Uh, just a few people. We're talking like 10, 12 people max with lots of space in between. But we are in a pickle, you know, liability wise, are we sending our crew out into a really vulnerable state? Right. So it's something that we're discussing. And they have to feel comfortable. If they feel comfortable and they are wearing masks and they are doing everything appropriately, which they would be, mm-hmm. then, you know, they each have make their own choices also. So you can guide them, but if they, and if they don't feel comfortable, that's okay as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's the approach that we're having. And we just have to find out being a stay at home order. What's the rule? What's the law? Can, can right. we go and shoot this with a minimal crew? I would say yes, only because in a church type ceremony, it's a worship service and those have been pared down, but they are still happening. I know because my church is live streaming and they, you, you have beyond the priest, you have uh, the, the cantors and the lectors and the altar servers. Oh, so. that's interesting. So your church there, they still have the singers. They do. See my church, um, it's completely closed. And wow. they're not live streaming. So it's, you know, I guess all, you know, obviously all circumstances, all situations are definitely every, every you know, community. And, and the laws are constantly hand- changing. Handling. Yes. And the laws are changing. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's easier for the couple to try to keep everything streamlined into one day, less coordinating. And also, right. you know, when you're looking at footage wise, we have footage from here, footage from there. Of course, yeah. we're happy to put it together for a, you know, a great video for them. But there's a lot of different elements yeah. and factors to consider. And I've had clients say I might still get married now, even though we're rescheduling, and then also get married then. But yeah. this mm-hmm. will be legal just so mm-hmm. they can be started with that. That's a right. lot of my clients have said that. Outfit for them or dress for them also. 
Yeah, a lot of my clients have said the same thing. Um, they're just going to have literally the two of them. They're mm-hmm. going to elope, if you will. And right. then later uh, on, you home. know, I'm sorry? Elope at home? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, later on, they'll they'll do the big shebang. Right. And I, I've been talking to people about that a lot. I say, why don't you get married this year, a small wedding ceremony, and next year, let blow it out of the park. Let's just have this amazing reception. And if you would like to have a ceremony celebrating your one year anniversary, and it doesn't even need to be somebody who will legally marry you at that point, it could be anyone. Let's do that. And like I said, most of my clients want to do this year, but I would do it. I'd be like, next year we're going all out because people are going to really want a party next year. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly now. right. You're going to be alive to <laughs> I that's can't exactly wait to, right. to see there. these parties next year. <laughs> the celebrations will be huge. Right? And oh that's my God. where we have to keep hope for ourselves too and other vendors is they will be back. People love to celebrate, right? We need to celebrate life. That's why we do what we do. That's oh, why please. we're still in it. Right. Jeannie will um, make an apple pie and say, I need to reward myself. I'm going and I'm getting my (laughs) hair done. And (laughs) she has the best reasons to celebrate for absolutely (laughs) everything. Today is Tuesday and my son was up all night crying. You know what? I'm going to take myself out. I'm going to go celebrate. I deserve it. (laughs) We have like every 27th in my house, we have a dance party. And sometimes my little one will be like, let's have a dance party. I'm like, let's do it. Let's put on the music. We set up two karaoke machines in the basement right now. So it's very loud sometimes, Great. but mm-hmm. very fun. And we yeah. put on all types and just dance, rock out. And sometimes cooking also or baking. We put on music and dance. You have to keep celebrating because what are we doing if we're just miserable every day and yeah. just like moping around? Why? That's not productive not good for immune systems. That's right. You know, here's the thing. There's so much good in what we're doing with planning, but we it's so uncertain what we're talking about. You know, can we have a gathering? We're talking about this. So in your like deepest sense of you, Amanda, yes. what's your advice for our listeners? If you're engaged and you're planning your wedding, do you think that it's okay to continue to plan your wedding? Or do you think that like, hold on, hold on to your spending, sit tight, Maybe wait until, you know, we have more information or we see where this is going. I think if you wait, you're not going to have anyone you want. Because I've heard a lot of people saying, should we wait? Should we wait? Like wait until next year to plan for six months from then. You're not getting anyone if you do that. Because people from this year are moving it to fall next year. So you might have, there might be some people you can book. But the people you found that as well. You should book it now. Definitely. You should get started. Somebody contacted me the other day for spring. They're like, I don't know. I might start in a few months. I'm like, for spring, you have to start now because people are moving it. So it's almost more competitive in that sense. Yes. Yeah. And you want to accommodate, you want to accommodate these, you know, your couples that are having to unfortunately postpone. But then of course you want to be able to have openings for, for new couples right. that want to schedule their weddings as well. So that, that's been a bit of a challenge. So it's um, important that, to ask the vendors, right? Like, oh my gosh. what's your and policy? You make it so easy with this addendum. I have to, t- I have to compliment you and Natalia, right? Every, you had it seamless. You had, you knew what to do, even though no one's known what to do with this, right? You, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy how just no one, no one knows. And everyone's like, okay, do we contract for next year? Do we, do we just send an email? No, yeah. you need to do exactly what you guys did where it's written out. There's no question about when it is. I've had that situation. Um, just like, just like you, where you're not sure, can I do that date because I'm rescheduling someone else, but someone else wants to book this. A new client wants to book this. Right. And You need to make it work for everyone. What I have been doing with people is I say, who, I hate to ask this, but who are your top vendors who you really definitely want? 
And I, they're like, well, I want everyone I booked. I'm like, I know. And I will try my hardest to get you that. But if you had to choose who are your top three, and those are the people I contact first after the venue to make sure the new dates um, that are available. And I say, what are you, when are you available of those dates? And then I go back and if they're available, all of them, then I keep going. But if they're not, then I have to go to the client and say, These, this is who is available. And that happened with the one we rescheduled together where a couple people were not available. Oh, okay. So and they we had still to- rescheduled to them because you were available yeah. and a couple of other people were. And we're getting new vendors so- for them. What was the process with the companies that were not available? Were they able to get their recover their deposit? What happened there? Were they able to fulfill that spot with a new vendor that was available? So the deposit, which I expected, they're not getting back because that person is not doing it because she's already booked for the couple with a few other people that day, but she had secured that spot and had said no to other people. So that deposit stays with her. The other person who said, I can't do it either, actually ended up reworking her schedule mm. where she could make it work, where she's doing makeup, where she can still do the bride. And then she'll have an assistant do the other, start with the other so she can come in and do the bride and then leave again. Very savvy. So it will okay. still work. Okay. And, and then we're just keeping, same thing with, most people are keeping the same rates um, a hotel block actually did that for that one where usually it goes up in October and they're keeping it flat for us. Cool. So I'm working out as much as I can where let's say in the summertime, it was a three night minimum and now in the fall, it shouldn't be. So they are agreeing with me and they're saying, you know, it should, that's fine. We don't need a three night minimum. So saving money for clients in small ways. I actually had a client this week where I said, hold your invitations, just keep holding them. Mm -hmm. They have to go out very soon, but I don't want you to keep spending where you're sending out the invitations and then you have to order another invitation and send it out in two weeks from now because we have a new date. So instead they're holding it, we're getting a card to go with it and then it's being sent out. Yeah. Great. So very smart. Most people are being really great. Like that invitation designer is giving a really great price for, for doing that extra card mm-hmm. to go inside. Yeah, so. I would hope so. I feel like this is like the, the line that's drawn. You either separate people who are really good people who understand what people are going through and they try to be as human as possible, mm-hmm. or you have people who they turn into jerks. Like yeah. I can't, um, I feel horrible for the couples who can't get their deposit back. It's like, well, sorry. Now you have to pay for your florist twice or you have to pay for your right. DJ twice, do you know? But and I think there's, it's, I, I always put myself in everyone's shoes. So if, sure. if there are a vendor who has done work after that deposit was given, I understand it more. If they're, they just got the deposit and that was it, you know, so there's always, I understand every side and I try to be as, um, accommodating And reasonable with everyone. It is a hard, and the whole thing. The whole situation on both ends is difficult. I had to, um, we we had a family party that I had to reschedule. And we put, it was at a restaurant. We put down a deposit. My mom put down a deposit for my dad. And I called up uh, for my mom. And the man's voice, hello. He was waiting, you know. And I, I, I get it. I mean, because the amount of money he must have had to, and I, 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 and I had had a conversation with, with my mom previously. It's her money, not mine. But right. she said, let him keep it, you know, for somebody that help out, whatever, your staff, whatever it's going to do. Well, the tone of his voice, <laughs> how it softened and, oh, thank you so much. And it felt really good to be able to support the local restaurant and, um, you know. Because those expenses. That's yeah. the thing people are. I know. I know. Our, all of our businesses still have expenses every month. That's right. Oh my goodness, I know. And we're we're about to have one of our couples on to go oh, walk no. us through all of their process of what it's been like to postpone. So I'm so curious to know what yeah. it's been like for them, moment by moment by moment. Right. So uh, we are, I know that they are in, there's an actual waiting room that Zoom oh. has. Uh, so there's an actual, they're in the waiting room waiting to be brought on. So I can't wait to find out. Yeah. Because everyone reacts so differently. 
Some people have been extremely stressed. Some people have been like, okay, we'll just move it. And everyone, and it's okay. No matter what you're feeling, it's okay. Amanda, like you brought so much knowledge to this and there's little things that we never even considered that couples are going through right now. So thank you for that. And again, sharing your personality and your vibrance. (laughs) Look, yes. you are a breath of fresh air in your <laughs> flower blouse and your earrings. I know, I was going to say, even, even, her, even her shirt, like, just, like, and the, the room is sunny, and I, I mean, oh, my God, I love it. Only you, <laughs> only you would bring this on, and yes. we love you for it. It's, it does. It does. And so. you're right. The title of your company, Smiling Through Chaos. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Amanda. Yeah. Be safe. And we'll be in touch like we always are. Yes. Of course. Yep. (laughs) Stay safe. Stay well. Keep smiling. Keep wearing those flowery shirts. I love them. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Our next guests are Christina and David. Hi, guys. <laughs> they, hi. They are an existing LPS client. Uh, they've had to change their wedding from May 30th of this year to next May, May 8th, 2021, um, because of this COVID-19 situation. So thank you guys so much for joining us. And, um, you know, just you're about to share your experience with us. And we really appreciate your time. And they're going to walk us through what the process has been like for them from finding out from day one uh, that there is a virus that is going to affect our world to where they are today, walking us through everything. So so how okay. are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's life been like? I'm, by the way, um, I'm Jeannie. Nice to meet you. Hi, Christine. <laughs> and Natasha, I'm who you met with originally when, yes. you, when you worked with us. <laughs> so we want to know about your, you know, your experience thus far, um, living through this whole COVID-19 situation. So yeah, what, what's what been going on, guys? Um, we've been home. So I work as a physical therapist, but um, fortunately, our clinic had to close down because it's located in a gym. Uh-huh. So I'm just mostly home. But David. Hey, um, I'm working Hi. from home. Okay. I'm an architect, and um, yeah, I've been here for the past four weeks. So you wow. have a lot of time together. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> a lot of pre-marriage, marriage time. Yes. And like, let me ask you this question. I- I'm curious. Having, I-, I mean, everybody has more time now, clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know what? P- put a pause button on that. How quickly did you have to reschedule the wedding? Let me ask that question first. So I start, we started thinking about it maybe like, the second week of March. Okay. Um, So you got right into it. Yeah. And tell us when your original wedding date was supposed to be. I mean, sorry, May 30th. May 30th. May 30th. So you you were very proactive. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, uh, I was planning for a year and a half in advance. So most of everything was already done. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I I was watching everything with COVID and all the numbers going up and everything. Um, my cousin, she's in public health, and she's uh-huh. like, no, like, numbers are rising. It's increasing exponentially. You might yeah. to think about it. And I'm like, yeah. And my other friend getting married in August, she was already freaking out. And I was like, maybe, like, I should freak out a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, so I contacted the venue. I, was, I shot them an email. It was just like, um, listen, like, I'm thinking just in advance, like, how is this going to affect us? And she was just like, well, hopefully there's still some time, like, three months. And, yeah, so I was like, okay. So then I just kind of hung out for, like, the rest of the month and then, and were you nervous or were you just going with the flow? Like, I'll do Yeah, were you like chill about it or were you yeah. like, oh my God, you know, like, and you guys, by the way, you pushed it a whole year, correct? You, you went from May to next May. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so how'd that feel? Was it like, oh God, or was it more like. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so I had emailed them initially and then I, um, you guys sent out an email um, and was just like, you know, just keep us in a loop. So I was just like, oh, maybe I should be proactive about this and um, my parents they're like you know maybe you should postpone it I'm like yeah maybe maybe like 
later this year and they're like, no, probably next year. I'm like, you're crazy. You're so <laughs> smart. Now, do they live local? Um, Yes. They're like okay. 20 bucks for me. Oh, so, how great. Yeah. So we have a lot of people in New York. Um, my, my wedding's in Long Island. Mm-hmm. And, at the um, loft, right? The loft at Bridgeview. At the loft. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has family in Ecuador and South America. And then I have some family in California and Florida. So I was mostly thinking about them, how it's going to affect them right. here. And Being able to come celebrate with you. Yeah. They're kind of important people, like grandparents and parents. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And Christina, how many guests did you did you guys have originally? 150. And, and it, it, I mean, it, it's going to be the same, I would assume, right? Because it's a whole year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And That's so all great. of your guests were completely on board saying, absolutely great. Now they can just plan their lives oh. and not have to worry, like, will I be able to travel there in – if it were yeah. July, August, September, if they were pushing it, you know, if you were pushing it just a few months. Yeah. So he has a cousin in Australia and she's in the medical field and she's like, listen, I like, I don't think I'm going to be able to come. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, we should think about it. So then I emailed the venue again on April 1st. I was just like, you know, I'm thinking about like my options. Like, what are you guys like? What's your plan? And they said most of the couples in um, March and April have postponed it to later the year. And okay. I was like, well, I think I might have to postpone it. Um, what availability do you guys have? And we want something on Saturday because we just want to enjoy the night and not have people worry about um, taking days off or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, all Saturdays are booked. And we have Thursdays mm-hmm. and one Sunday in December. <laughs> oh, God. So it's true. Like, okay. It's true. We have our yeah. our Thursdays are booked. I mean, usually Thursdays are they'll get busy, but they're definitely not a, a Friday or a Saturday. And we have so many Thursdays that are now solidly booked. Yeah. So then we just ask for dates <laughs> next year and all of summer and all of September are booked. And I was like, how about May the same time? And they're like, we have May, I think, 2nd and May 8th. And I was just like, let Do me it. just check live pictures yeah to see if they have it really smart it's really yeah. smart and I bet you just have like peace of mind right now like you can exhale that it's done you're not having to we were just talking about this sitting and watching the news going uh-oh yeah did I make the right move we've had couples actually postpone and now have to postpone again mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's tough I mean and obviously everybody has different plans and and you know I I, I do understand couples that want to have they don't want to push that far. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've been advising our couples to do exactly what you guys did because Mm -hmm. it's just, um, it's, it's more of a seamless process. Just don't know like when this is going to last, like how long is going to last. Cause my friend's wedding in August, she said in two weeks, they're going to decide if they're actually going to push through. Yeah. Um, Cause they have family in Ireland and Spain. Oh, wow. That's tough. I mean, now I'm like at peace, but I did <laughs> have my freak out for. Like- I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, and what I was saying earlier, um, it's interesting because now we have like all of this time. I mean, we're all, typically the world. We're all so busy, right? We get up in, in the morning. We don't see each other for most of the day. We see each other in the evening. You know, we're exhausted. You know, it's it's life. It's like the daily grind of life. But um, do you ironically find that? I think you might have said you did a lot of this anyway earlier, but. Do you ironically find that now you have now that you have more time, um, it it makes it even more less stressful because you really could just shop and peruse and you know the internet and kind of just would would you agree with that or would you say it's it's yeah. making you antsy to have all of this time? <laughs> uh, no, not really. Um, I'd say I've I've been like a laid back bride, like just you know like okay that sounds cool. And my bridesmaids are amazing. Like always give my bridesmaids things to do. In the group, mm-hmm. so they help out. So I've just been kind of relaxed. What kind of things do you give them to do? Now I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> um, just like like with the invitations and stuff, they're like, oh, uh, I was like, oh, I'm gonna like pack them and address them, address them to everyone. They're like, we can do that. So we had like a that's packing. exactly right because this is what they're for. This is why yeah. they're bridesmaids and maids of honor. So you are, um, you're doing it right. Now, do you do you give your girlfriends um, like any sort of advice? I mean, because you're, I'm sure you guys have a lot of friends that are also getting married. You just said you're your friend in August. Um, do you tell them, guys, just try to push this back a year? Like, wh- or do you kind of just 
stay out of it. <laughs> what do you, how do you handle it? So the only one, the only other wedding this year would be my friend in August. And okay. I, I have to call her this week because she's absolutely freaking out now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the last time we spoke probably around um, April, mm-hmm. like beginning of April, end of March, I was just like, they should be fine by then. We'll just take it like one day mm-hmm. at a time. You know, we should just be safe and stuff. And I was like, mm-hmm. if we have to postpone, we have to postpone. Right. Um, she was just like, okay, okay. But like, I'm probably going to like, you know, just say, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a little bit of information. We had a, I had a meeting with one of our clients that was also supposed to be married in May and he's postponed to the end of August. So another August wedding and a lot of people involved, a lot of guests, large guest lists. And he's a frontline worker. What he does is actually, uh, look at the projections of when is it safe. So he's he's one of the though them that we're waiting and list, you know waiting to listen to for the advice and news. So I asked him. I said, so do you really feel like it's going to be safe? You have a, a large guest list. Do you think it'll be safe at the end of August to do your wedding? And he had mentioned that uh, scientifically, when temperatures rise, the virus will ha- there will be a pocket of safety where things will start to normalize again. Um, Cases will dramatically drop. And this particular pocket is expected to happen later August and September, early September. So listen, this is just hearsay. This is, I am not, don't, don't (laughs) tell you. you (laughs) Don't get upset with me if if this is wrong. I'm, I'm no scientist. I'm simply repeating something I heard. But they, but this was his advice. And I said, well, he goes, before the second wave of this comes in again. And I said, yeah. but don't you feel that by having your event with so many people is going to contribute to the second wave? And he was under the impression that because of the warm temperatures that it is, it's not, you know, cases in, um, in India, for example, are much uh, you know, it, it, not as many as, as in other parts of the world, as well as South America, anywhere near the ec- equator is ha- having really mild, um, you know, curves or, you know, amounts of quantities, mild quantities of people. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I know that you're invited to this August wedding. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking like... I'm thinking it'll be better and maybe it'll be safe by then, but then you're going to have people who are worried and maybe guests won't want to come. Not that they will want to, but they'll kind of be, you know. Well, that, yeah, that, that's what I'm curious. We, we actually spoke about this earlier, um, you know, the trepidation on certain people's and, you know, I mean, you just can't, it's, it's, it's a case by case basis. It's a person by person basis. You just don't know. There are going to be people that are cool with it. And there are going to be people that just, you know, aren't. Um, And it's hard for me to even ask you guys how you feel about it because you're really not going to know until then, you know, so how you guys are going to feel. It's an uncertain time, that's for sure. How about you, David? How, you know, what has been your experience? And, uh, you know, Christina is the leader of the wedding planning. (laughs) You know, it looks like she is. So you are holding her hand and keeping her calm. And she is really just the, the... the person making all the yeah. changes and everything. Okay. We've been doing great. I mean, we've been doing great. Um, what can I say? I mean, this sucks, but uh, mm-hmm. what am I supposed to say? I mean, um, You're life gives you lemons. Like you make lemonade, right? <laughs> what else are you going <laughs> to do? Right. <laughs> you know? Um, and so, and, and, and I'll put this question to you, Christina, because I'm sure it was you that made the call. So vendor was first. Um, your venue was the first person to call, actually officially change the date. Who are your other vendors? What was that experience? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Were you able to reschedule everyone or did you have to go with different companies? Talk us through that. So, yeah. So I contacted the venue first. I was like, what are your dates? And then I wanted a couple that worked. Um, Also, I'm part Chinese. So there's different lucky dates that I'm allowed to get married. Sure. Mm -hmm. So then that also like cuts down some dates. Um, but then also I was like, I need to make sure that Live Picture Studios is available too. So before I even confirmed, I was like, make, I had to make sure you guys were available. Yeah. Because we're doing your photography and your videography. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. So did you guys love us? Were we like so cool about it? <laughs> this is great. They send out an email to us. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can't with all the papers. I was like, you know, one, one, one sheet. Have them sign it. New date. Done. It's too much. It's overwhelming for everybody. And we know, you know, so. That's right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Natalia, Natalia and Marcia, actually, they're our production team. They, they proactively reached out to our couples saying, yeah, exactly. this exists. We know what's going on. Where are you in your planning and your feelings? What's going on? Are you trying to keep your date? Are you trying to push it? Because we needed to know. Mm-hmm. I mean, thank and, God for her. And by the time our couples did start pushing, everything was already set up for us. So that's why on our end, things were hopefully seemingly easy mm-hmm. for you because the thought and processes had already been yeah. implemented. I like, hope they have the date and after you guys confirmed. I was like, oh, yeah. the whole thing is lifted off my shoulders. Awesome. And, and everyone else is like fine because um, I have a lot of friends in my entertainment. He's like, don't worry about it. Whenever mm-hmm. you need, I'll clear the schedule. Uh, my makeup artist is one of my close friends' friend. She's amazing. And then hairstylist too. And florist as well. So I was just like, this is great. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing to see like the human aspect of all of this coming through. I mean, everybody's, you know, going through their through their own thing with this. Every It's affecting the whole world. So um, nothing that anybody could have ever predicted. And we're all kind of carrying our own, you know, um, issues with this. So it's, it's, it's kind of nice to see people coming together and being accommodating. And um, you really, it's, it's such a unique situation because how often are you in a situation where it's everybody's affected by it? Yeah. So you can kind of all empathize together and then, you know, come up with a solution and, um, and then that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think most of like the anxiety and nervousness was from people asking questions like, mm. what do you do? And then, <laughs> Friends who have gotten married before in the past, they're like, well, you're going to have to like postpone and change the date and the venue. Do you have insurance? And I'm like, uh, do I have insurance? Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, it's stressful. White noise. Make it white noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're a very organized person too. Like you said, your planning took a good solid year and a half. You were you spaced things out. You gave yourself time. Yeah. So to have somebody so organized so that you can sit back and enjoy your wedding and to have to go through and redo everything all over again but it doesn't seem like you had any issues like everybody was pretty seamless yeah and you know no snafus for you so that's that's very good yeah Yeah. you're lucky now what what are you gonna do with your invites have you just like contacted everybody and said this is the new date are you planning on sending well you were may and you canceled in april so your invites did they go out yet they did. They did. They yeah. did. Oh, but okay. Well, I've just been blessed because my um, aunt and uncle own printing shops. Okay. So they had just like printed it out and sent it. But um, my website is like the real thing that's been keeping everything together through the knot, and um, it was great. Like they even they I was on. So it was just this week that I finally was like, Christina, you gotta like. Let everyone know. <laughs> like, you've done everything <laughs> officially to make it official. Like, I texted close friends and family already, but I, like, made a, a whole, like, official little card oh, cool. and sent it out digitally. And then, oh, you, that was great. So, to save on costs so that you didn't have to go through the reprinting and the postage well, all over again. Just so that they'll get the notice quicker because everyone's on their phone. Yeah. And I was like, I need to post something on the website. So, The knot, they actually put something up and was like, you know, COVID update, you can put up an announcement. So, you know, sorry, friends and family, just for safety, we postponed. Yeah. So here's an idea for invitation companies. If anybody is in the (laughs) invitation (laughs) world and and tell your, you said it was your your aunt that owns a company, a printing company. Mm -hmm. What if there's, (laughs) what if there's just stickers that come out that have the same font with your, your new date and you mail out the sticker and you're like, listen. Just put this right on top of your existing <laughs> invite, hang it on your fridge, and I'll see you next year. <laughs> Make it easy. That's so cute. I also put out like a whole like um, newsletter on the knot.com like for couples dealing with um, postponing and due to COVID or they just got engaged. One of my friends just got engaged two weeks ago. and she. Did How did that happen? 
So her birthday um, was two weeks ago, and her fiance now was had so much planned to propose to her, but everything just like did not happen. So he sure. just decided to propose to her like on her birthday, and she just Aww. down in the dumps, and she, that just like got her up. And then she's like, "Now how am I supposed to plan it?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, people are. We are so busy right now with couples because, like you, they have time <laughs> to yeah. plan. Yeah. Where before, sometimes couples would say, Oh, we're interested. Our date is so and so. And can you meet with us? It would be like three or four weeks from from then and we're like well we don't know if we'll be available for your date can you meet anytime sooner no because my fiance is traveling and I have a crazy schedule and this is the only date we can coordinate that doesn't exist anymore people are available and ready to yeah to talk and yeah. and um you know we we did talk about this a, a moment ago when planning your wedding just make sure that your vendors are on board if if you are planning a wedding that's like in August or September, mm-hmm. we did have a new client this week. Her wedding is August 8th. Um, Brand new client. She's planning her wedding. And she, that was the first question she said is, what do you do? And I said, well, we'll do just like we're doing with all of our existing clients. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, book the date while we have it available. And then if we need to push, then we push. Yeah. So. Everyone's been pretty amazing understanding. Yeah. This I'm so story. glad you guys had a, you know, you had an, a seamless experience with this COVID situation so far and and it's nice to see you guys smiling and happy and you <laughs> That's know right. it's it's really I love it I love it um because a lot of the phone calls as you can imagine have been stressed out couples uh, naturally mm-hmm. so um but then we get to make them happy because we're able to give them the you know the dates that they need so we're we're really thrilled about that too so what um, advice do you have for like other couples listening um, I would say, like, just think about safety, safety. Um, for yourself, your family, your loved ones. And also, I mean, you guys are together and you will get married. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. Still mm-hmm. love each other. And um, I mean, for like May 30th, we're still going to do something. Like, Aww. like if the courthouses are open. Maybe we'll get married. <laughs> yeah. Take yeah, that's up right. Um, at least website or something like that. Get Stay positive. And have a first dance or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> well, listen, Christina and David, thank you again so much for coming. And thank um, you, yes, for sharing your experience. We wish with you us. the best of luck. Keep in touch with us over this next year. We're so excited to shoot your wedding next year. <laughs> Yay. Um, LPS couple. Yeah. In the house. <laughs> So Thank you so much, guys. Considering us and inviting us on. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you guys so much. Absolutely. It's for good your to time. see you guys. Thank you so much, Christina and David, for sharing your story. We wish you the best of luck. We are so excited to shoot your wedding next May. And it was really good to see you guys today. In closing, yeah. I just want to say that it all comes down to love. You're getting married because you found each other. And whether that happens soon or whether that happens next year, is irrelevant you know it it will carry on and some of our couples are doing things small and convenient and close in time and others are pushing it so that they can have the biggest celebration but we are here for you and ready to celebrate alongside yes yes and to take advantage of the time you have right now because life is so fast-paced so we actually do have this gift of more time So I think that that's one kind of positive spin on all of us. So um, this will end, guys. This will end. Let's just all stay together and muscle through. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And please make sure to visit our website, podcast.livepicturestudios.com. And please make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Live Picture Studios. You can also email us at podcast at livepicturestudios.com or hashtag LPS podcast with questions or anything you'd like for us to share. We love hearing everybody's stories. Anybody that wants to, you know, come on board and talk about their own experience with this virus, uh, please do. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is a, our quarantine episode. But yep. we don't know how long we're going to be quarantined. So we're, yeah. ha- we're happy to have more of these. And, and, and listen, the you can going. wear, I wanted to say this earlier. Um, you can wear pajamas. I'm totally cool with that. <laughs> That's no exactly judgment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast has been produced by Kwali, Natalia Delgado, and Mark Falcon. 
Our editor, our wonderful editor, is Nicole Palmetti, and music has been provided by Ian Post and Artlist. Until next time, bye. Happy planning, and please be safe. Be safe, guys. Take care.